Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my Android development tutorial for beginners with a focus on App Inventor. And in this part of the tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to App Inventor Blocks, and we are going to completely finish the app that we just started in part one of this tutorial. And so, if you haven't seen part one of this tutorial, I provide a link in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description for this video, and you absolutely have to watch it, otherwise, none of this is going to make sense. So, I have a lot to do, so let's jump into it. Okay, so in the last part of the tutorial, we created this whole entire interface we have right here. And one thing that I left out is the icon. This is going to be the icon that represents your application on your Android device. And just to show you what it looks like, here it is. Well, actually, it's not there. Here is actually the zombie picture that I drew. And inside of here, this is just what I'm going to use for my zombie icon. And it's 96 pixels by 96 pixels, so it will show up really nice. And all I need to do to import it is just to go over here to Icon, click on it, come down here and click on Upload File. This little guy here is going to pop up, and I'm going to hit Choose File. And here is the zombie icon. Just double click on it, and then click OK. And it's going to appear over here in a second as it loads. And there it is, zombie icon. And that's how easy it is to go and add an icon for your application. Now what I want to do is jump in and actually show the application running. Okay, so to test our application, here it is, you can see it on the screen, Hello Zombie. Hopefully you can see it, there it is right there. Now if you have this installed but you do not have GPS enabled, this is what's going to happen. So you're going to open it like any other app, and then you're going to see this warning message. It's going to say, can't access GPS, please enable GPS. Well, because we set everything up so that it will go and automatically go to the right part of the settings and allow the user to enable GPS, They'll hit OK, and then they'll get sent to exactly the right place, which is right here. And they'll have to put a check mark right there. And then they'll be able to use our application by hitting the back button first. And then they're back inside of our application, and it's working. Okay, so you got an example of what exactly is going to happen or what we're going to have to program to make it work so that if the user doesn't have their GPS set up, it's going to go and it's going to send them to the settings part so that they're going to be able to run and use their application. Now let's take a look at all the things we're going to have to build inside of our application. Okay, so as you saw, we're going to need to enable the GPS if it isn't already enabled. We're going to have to send the user to enable the GPS if it's not enabled. We're going to have to get the current latitude and longitude, and we're going to be using latitude and longitude a lot with multiple different things. So we're going to use it to store the location for latitude and longitude using the GPS data that we get. We're also going to be displaying latitude and longitude on the screen in our little label. And we're also going to be speaking it. Now that's going to tell us that we are going to have to store latitude and longitude in a certain special place so that we'll be able to share it. And that special place is going to be a global variable, which is, it sounds complicated, and I know a lot of you guys out there that are already not a programmer are thinking, why is he talking about this? But this is just for the beginners. Whenever there is data that we need to share between multiple different components or multiple parts of our program, it's going to make sense to store them in special little boxes and a special little box is called a global variable. Then what we need to do is make the phone vibrate whenever the zombie button is touched. We're also going to have to make the phone speak out location data when it's touched. And we're also going to have to be able to detect shaking as well as detect screen orientation changes. Now you don't have to memorize all this. I'm going to be bouncing back and forth from this to what is called App Inventor Blocks. So let's take a look at exactly what App Inventor Blocks are. Okay, so this is the part of App Inventor you are used to. And this is what is called the designer. Over here, designer, that's where we are. Now we're going to take a look at blocks. So let's click on that. And now we're in the block section and it's completely empty. So what we have to do here is to program and make everything work. Now inside of App Inventor, pretty much everything is a component or a button, label, you know, all those things you saw. And they are going to trigger what are called events. And then we have to react to those events. An event, for example, would be clicking on a button. That's an event. Something happened. Let's react to it. Now, like I said before, we're going to have to store our zombie latitude and longitude in a special place. That special place is going to be a global variable. To access or create a global variable, we're going to come over here to variables. And don't try to memorize all these things. I'm going to be using them over and over and over again, and eventually you'll just get used to it. So here you see, initialize global variable, and it has a name inside 
inside of there. Now what's one of the things we need to store? Well we need to store our zombie latitude and to start off we're going to give it a dummy value. Now to create a dummy value just click anywhere, not on a component, anywhere else and hit the double quotes like that and then hit enter. That's going to create this little piece here which is going to be pretty much a nothing value. Don't know if you heard that click or not but it clicked into place and now those things are created. Then we have to create another global variable or a box that we're going to store the longitude in. So just drag that little guy out there and type in, I'm going to call it zombie longitude and there can be no spaces in here and a common thing that we do is the very first word in our name is going to be lowercase and every other word thereafter is going to be uppercase so we'll be able to see what they look like. Click anywhere, double quote, enter and there we go. We gave it a nothing value because there's currently nothing in the box. All right, then we have to think about what do we need to do next? Well, one of those things that we're going to need to do next is enable GPS or send the user and force them to enable the GPS. Now, whenever you took a look at the application, and you might want to rewind this and look at it again, what happened whenever you started it and the GPS was not enabled? Well, it flashed up a dialog box and said, hey, you need to enable this. And then you hit clicked on, on OK, and then you went and you fixed it. Well, that's what we're going to do. This is going to be initializing the program. We need to have the GPS enabled before we are able to use our program, so that means initialize the initial steps we must perform to get our program to work. Those initial steps are going to be to get the location sensor to start working so that it can get GPS data. Another thing we're going to have to do is if we can't get that data, we're going to have to pop up a dialog box. And so let's go and do that. All right, so if we are going to be initializing and whenever we're initializing something, we're referring to the screen or the app itself, and here it is. So we're going to click on screen and we're going to want to initialize things. And where is initialize? Oh, there it is. It was right there all along. So if I want to start initializing, I just click and hold and drop. And there we are, and there it is. These are going to be all the things that are done before our program gets going. So what did I say? We need to make the location sensor work so that we can get things like the zombie latitude and the zombie longitude data. All right, so to do that, we need our location sensor. Here it is. It's going to have all the things that we need. We just click on it. And the very first thing we're going to have to do is enable it. So let's look for enable and you can see right here this is location sensor enabled. Also you can see here that we have set location sensor enabled. Well the important part is these puzzle pieces. See look at them. This guy right here is going to provide us with data. This puzzle piece here is going to allow us to set something. That's the reason why there's an open puzzle piece here and there's not an open puzzle piece there. So open puzzle piece means that we're going to be setting something just like the name says while here it says that we are going to be trying to find out if the location sensor is enabled. Well we know that it isn't so let's drag this out of here come up here and you can see that these two pieces fit right together. Now a weird quirk whenever we're using the location sensor to get GPS data is sometimes it wants to be set to false, meaning that it is not enabled. In that situation what we're going to have to do is first set it to not enabled and then set it to being enabled or true. Now that means we're going to be using two of these guys so we're going to click on it and we're going to right click on it and click on duplicate and that's going to make two of those and they snap together right like that. Now whenever we want to put false or true inside of here, we don't want to type them out like we did up here. We want to instead grab them from the logic center. Logic is things like true and false. So we are going to grab false first. We're going to shut it off and then we're going to duplicate that, put that on there and set it to true. And that is going to make our location sensor enabled. Now what we need to do is choose the provider of our data and what we want to choose is GPS. So what we're going to have to do is say if GPS is an option to provide us with our latitude and longitude data that we want to get, then we want to use it. However, it won't be available to us if they have GPS non-enabled. In that situation, we're going to have to open up a dialog box and ask them to fix that problem. So to do that, anytime you have a situation in which you're saying, I want to do something if something is true, otherwise I want to do something else, 
In those situations, you want to use what is called an if-then-else statement or an if-then-else block. Those guys can be found inside of control over here. And you can see right here, if something is true, then I want to do something. Else, I want to do something else. So just click and drag it and drop it right underneath of there. And there we go. Now, what exactly do we want to be able to do here? We want to go in and say, hey, location sensor, the available providers you have for getting latitude and longitude is one of those named GPS. Well, what we're going to need to do here is go and look at the location sensor and see what it provides to us. So we'll click on this and we can look at what's going on. Available providers is one of those things. So let's take available providers out and let's drop it. There it is. However, what do we want to do? We want to find out if one of the available providers is GPS. In that situation, what we're going to be doing is looking at text, which is going to be the list of available providers, and figuring out if one of those happens to be GPS. So we want to be searching through text. So we click on text and we look for, well, we take a look at what we have available to us. Let's just cycle through here. And then we come down to contains text, which are going to be a list of available providers. And piece is going to be the thing we are looking for specifically, which is GPS. So let's drag that out there and let's look at this. What do we want to do? We want to search the text, which is a list of all the available providers of data in regards to latitude and longitude. And we want to find out if one of those available providers is GPS. So we're going to click, put a double quote, and type in GPS and hit enter. Grab our little puzzle piece and put it there. So all this is doing is it's saying, hey, give me the list of available providers. Is one of them GPS? If one of them is GPS, then we want to use it. So we're going to say we want to set our provider name to be GPS. Since we are still using location sensors, that's going to be inside the location sensor area. And we're going to look for provider name. And there it is. However, we want to set it to GPS. So instead of this one, we want this one. Grab it, drop it, come up here. Then set location sensor provider name to, it's going to be GPS. We can just click on this and duplicate it if we'd like. Put that right there. And then in this situation, we want to lock it to stay GPS. We do not want it to become something else. And I'm actually going to print out and put all these guys on my website. So you'll be able to copy directly from there because I know sometimes it's hard to copy from a video. And I'll put it a link to those pictures in the description that's underneath this video. So we want to lock our provider now on GPS. And this is something you're just going to learn over time. And how we're going to do that is cycle through here until we have provider locked. And let's drop that and drop that right there. And then we need to set something to true. So let's just grab this guy right here. Or we can just remember, hey, true and false is logic. Something's either true or it's false. And we can grab that out of there just so we know where that came from. Come over here and drop it into place. And there we go. Now the situation comes in which maybe one of the available providers isn't GPS. Well, we need that to be something that we can use. And we also know the only reason why the GPS wouldn't work is if they don't have that set up on their phone. So we need an else. If this was true, we're going to do the then part. If this isn't true, we want to do something else. So we're going to click inside of here and you can see right here that we can use else if or else. Well, we don't need this right now. So let's just use else and we're going to drag and drop that there. And then the else appears down there. A little bit weird, but you'll get used to it. Now in this situation, we need to open up a dialog box just like you saw before. And we need to say, hey, go get your GPS to work. So whenever we want to do that, we want to use what is called a notifier to pop up the dialog box. Well, we already put a notifier in here. There's the notifier. Click on that. And what do we want to do? We want to show a dialog box. So we look through all these different things. And look at this. One of them is show choose dialog. Drag that, drop it there, bring it up here, and there we go. Now inside of this, we need to provide a message, which is going to be inside the dialog box. Title, which is going to be at the top of the dialog box. Then we're going to have two buttons and the first one's going to be OK, and the second one's going to be Cancel, and yes, it's going to be cancelable. So our message could be something like, double quotes, remember, please enable GPS. 
and enter and there we have that and put that in there and there it's ready to go now for a title we could do something and yes you could also click on these and hit duplicate drop that in there and come in here and change this to something like can't access GPS and there it is another thing is remember the first button that appears in a dialogue and if you're at all confused just rewind go back to it almost sounded like I rewinded my voice there for a second rewind take a look at the application again we can just come in here or I can just click here somewhere and go OK which is going to be an option this is going to be a button and then the other one could be cancel and there we go and then cancelable well that's a logic question isn't it and we're gonna say is it possible to cancel and in this situation we'll say yeah it is alright so there we go so that opens up and initializes everything the only problem would be is what are we gonna do after the dialogue pops up and they click on OK well in that situation we come to part two send the user to enable the GPS so let's go and do that so anytime we use a dialog box after the choice has been made we are going to need to catch it react to that event the event being clicking on the OK button saying yeah I want you to be able to use my GPS well to handle the event from a notifier we're gonna go back to the notifiers and we're gonna look at what we got here and one of them is after choosing after they've made their choice in a dialog box what do we want to do so I'm gonna grab this and drag it out of here drop it in here now what exactly do we want to do once they have made a choice well we want to see if the choice was okay and if it was okay then we want to send them out and have them make changes to their settings so what are we doing here sounds like an if then statement if they clicked on okay then we're gonna send them to make changes to their settings so that means we're going to be needing to do some control things and that's gonna be an if then if they chose okay then we're gonna go and change our settings now in this situation we're going to need to know what choice they made and real nicely we can get that information right here from get choice so let's just drag that out and put it there but we want to figure out was the choice okay well in that situation we're going to have to come in here and do a little bit of looking around and that means we're gonna to have to go to logic we're gonna see if the choice was equal to okay so grab that drag it down here and throw it in then we're gonna get the choice they made and see if it is equal to okay and you might want to actually copy this here duplicate just to make sure you get exactly the same thing and put it inside of there so in the situation in which they made the choice that it was okay to change the settings that means we are going to go and allow them to make the changes now this brings in what is called a procedure or a function or a bunch of statements that we want to perform and we're gonna keep them in one little box so that maybe we want to perform them somewhere else those are called procedures I'm going to demonstrate a procedure here or how to create one and then after you've seen this a couple times you'll just understand the way it works so to create a procedure we just go to procedures over here there's procedures and then we look at our results up here or what we're going to be able to do now a procedure again is just like I want to do a couple things like you would do in a programming language with a function just look at what I do and it'll make sense so what I have to ask myself is do I want a result after the procedure is performed or do I not well I don't have any reason to want anything after they go and change their settings so I am going to use this guy so what exactly do I want them to do I want to send them to the settings part in their Android device that is going to allow them to turn the GPS on well I'm actually going to actually have to show you something here we're gonna go into this guy right here this is a place where I can cycle through all of the potential settings options available on a device by no means try to really focus in on this or memorize any of this this is again something you're just going to either remember by looking at the pictures on my website or through practice time and time again so what I want to do is I want to send them to the part that's going to allow them to turn on location services so I can use their GPS so inside of here I'm going to do a search for location up here there we go and I'm gonna cycle through all of the potential options 
Well, here if we look, we see show settings allow configuration of current location sources. That's the guy that we want. Again, don't try to memorize this, but this is the part of settings that is going to allow us to go in and turn on GPS for our app. So I'm going to copy that guy, jump back over into App Inventor, and anytime that I want to open up another activity or another application, I'm going to use something inside of here called Activity Starter. So let's click on that. And whenever you use Activity Starter, you have to tell it first what action or what activity or what application you want to have open, which is right here. Those are called actions. Drag that out of here. Drop that right down there. Then we have to say, okay, well, we have to give a location for what you want to open. Well, in this situation, that is going to be that settings thing that I just copied and pasted. Double quote, paste that in there, hit enter, and there it is. And this is going to be the part of settings that we are going to launch. Then after you define what activity you want to have executed, you have to tell it to start that activity. So again, go into Activity Starter, click on it. Then we're going to go to the top right here where it says Call Start Activity. Come down here and drop that in. So here we defined what activity we want to have open, which is going to be the settings part of our Android device. And here we just said Start it. So that's what's going on there. Well, I want to give this guy a nice name, and this nice name is going to be Open Location Settings, right like that. And now that I have that defined, we know that we have to call Open Location Settings if their choice was OK, meaning that it was OK for them to go in and change their GPS settings. So then if we want to call this guy right here, we're going to have to go into Procedures again and look for Call and look in. Open Location Settings is in there. Drag this out and drop it right there. And that is how we're going to be able to call that guy. So it's just a bunch of dragging and dropping. Okay, so we got over the hurdle of setting up the GPS automatically inside of settings. Now we need to get the current latitude and longitude. So let's go do that. Now to get the location data, we're going to have to go into the location sensor, click on that. And whenever you want to set up a new way of getting latitude and longitude, we're going to have to go to location changed. And here you can see latitude and longitude, as well as altitude is an option. We're going to grab that and drag it out here. Now with this guy, what we're going to do is we are going to set these global variables or boxes up here with the right information. And to get the location data for these guys, we can just put our little mouse over top of this and get set global zombie latitude drag it over here drop it right there and then since we want the latitude we put our mouse over this and we say hey get me the latitude and drop that right there we're also gonna have to get the longitude and we can just duplicate this drop it right there come in here change this to longitude and then change this to longitude as well and on there and there it is just like that, we're able to grab that information from the GPS and set it inside of there. Now remember, we also wanted to change the label to display the latitude and longitude information. No problem. Now if we want to change the label, we just come over here and click on this guy. And then we want to change the text for our label. So we want to find set the label text to, oops, there we are, got it. Drop it right there. And we're going to drag it right up here. And there we go. And then let's say that we want to print out latitude, print out whatever the latitude is. Then we want to print out longitude and the longitude information. Well, we want to print out more than one text area. So doing the whole click and double quote doesn't work. That means we need to change the way that we are going to be building or creating a list of text. In that situation, we're going to go over our little text tool and click on it. And the way to create more than one piece of text is to use what is called a join. Drag it over here, drop it right there, and there we go. Now we actually want to create four lines of text or four different things. So just click on this, grab string. String is a fancy word for a line of characters. And now we have four strings that are going to be showing. And you can see the puzzle pieces right there. Then we can click double quote like that and say latitude and put a colon and a space. There that is. Drop it in. Then we need to actually get the latitude and have that get printed out on the screen. So in that situation, we could drag this down here and put it right there. Or we could go and get the zombie latitude and put it right there. But I'll show you another way to do it also. We could also go directly to the location sensor like this. And then come through here and scroll down until we see it right here. Drag that out. Drop it. Come over here. And then drop our latitude data in right there. 
then we're also going to have to put longitude information out, duplicate this, drag that, drop it right there, and put longitude inside of there. However, if we want to have both of these on separate lines, we're going to have to use a line break, which is a backslash and an N. I know that's a little bit funky, all you programmer people know it, but just remember that's a short way to do a line break, to put a line break in text. So that works. Then we're going to do a duplicate, drop that inside of there, and change this to longitude, which is right there. And that is going to automatically, right there, that little block of blocks is going to update our little label inside of our application to show latitude and longitude. All right, so we have the GPS enabled, and we got the current latitude and longitude. Now what we want to do is get our phone to vibrate whenever the zombie is touched. So the zombie is actually a button, so come over here, click on button, and let's look at all the options we have. One of them is click. So grab that, drag it out here, drop it right there, and what do we want to do? Well, one of the things we want to do is have it vibrate. So come over here, go to sound one, there it is, and we can choose that we want it to vibrate. Bring it over here, drop it right there. How long do we want it to vibrate? Let's say a half a second, click anywhere, double quote, 500, there we go, drop it in. We could also come over here to the math section, right like this, and this is probably the most proper way of doing it, and actually picking the number, dragging this over, and dropping it right there. And you can also delete blocks by just right clicking on them and going delete block, there we go, and drop that in there and change this to 500 half a second. Another thing we wanted to do is whenever the zombie is clicked on we want to have it speak out actually this information up here latitude and longitude information. Well guess what we're going to need the text-to-speech come over here text-to-speech click on that and speak message sounds like exactly what I wanted to do drop that in there and there it is then we have to give it the message we want it to speak. Well we're gonna have multiple lines so that means we need a join Let's just do a duplicate here to keep it simple. Drop that right there. And then in this situation, we're going to get rid of this, drag it out of there, and delete it. We could also, let's zoom out here, grab this guy right here, drag it and drop it in the trash can if we'd like to do it that way. And let's make this a little bit friendlier. Let's say something like zombies latitude is, and then down here, let's say something like zombies longitude is. Whoop, zombies. There we go. Then we're going to have to get this information, and we have it stored in these global variables, remember? So we can just come up here and say get global zombie latitude. Come over here, drop it in there. That works. And we could also do a duplicate and drop this right here and change this to zombie longitude. And there we go. Also said that we're going to have a sound play whenever our application is shaken. So now, that is going to be in the accelerometer. That's going to detect that a shake has taken place. So we want to look through everything here, and we see when the accelerometer detects that the device is being shaken, we want to do some things. So grab that, drag it out of there, drop it right here, and there that is. We want a sound to be played, no problem, come over here, there's sound 2 right there. We want to play a sound, well, call the sound 2 and play it, that sounds like the right one. Drag it, drop it out of there, drop it in there, and then we want to change the label text. Well, since we already did that, this is a situation in which we might want to create a new procedure or function so we can just call this to occur. But in this situation, what I'm going to do is just click on this whole entire thing right here and duplicate it and drag this down and drop it right there. And there we go. So now the button, whenever it's clicked, is going to play a sound, it's going to vibrate, and it's also going to convert our text to a spoken robot voice that says zombies latitude is and says latitude zombies longitude is and says the zombies latitude and then also whenever it's shaken it's going to play a sound and after that it's going to change the text on our label and that brings us to the last thing detect screen orientation changes well, I'm actually going to do this in a little bit of a crazy way, just so that we can demonstrate a couple other different blocks that are available to us. Okay, so screen orientation changes. Well, guess what? That means we need to go to the screen. And anytime we're thinking about the device itself changing, this is probably where you're going to go. And you can see right here, when the screen or the device changes orientation, we're going to drag this out of here. What do we want it to do? Well, let's find ourselves some space here. And I'm zoomed way in. If you use App Inventor, you're like, wait a minute, why does this look so much different than mine? See, I'm zoomed in. That's why it looks the way that it looks. Okay, so when the screen orientation changes, what I want it to do is shrink the size of the zombie. So if, whenever you think about the orientation changing, 
If the orientation changes to horizontal, well, in that situation, that is going to mean that the screen width is greater than the height. Whenever it is vertical, which is the normal way of holding a phone, the width is going to be less than the height. So we're going to need an if then else statement, and that means we're going to have to go into control. There's our buddy if then else. Grab this guy, drop it right there. There we go. Then we're going to say if the screen width is greater than the screen height. Well, we need to do a greater than. And that's going to mean we're going to need our math guy right here. And it's actually inside of here where we have equals. Grab that. Drag it out. Try to find where I have it. There it is. Okay. Drag that. Drop it right there. Then if we want to find out what our screen width and height is, well, guess what? That's in the screen area. Come over here again. Click on this. And look for screen width and height. It's not there, so we're going to have to scroll down. And there we go. Screen width right there. Bring that out and try to find it and there we go. So we're going to say if our screen width is greater than our screen height, duplicate this and then change this to height of course, then what we want to do is change the size of our zombie. Well, our zombie is actually a button. There it is right there. Click on this and if we look at all the options that are available to us you can see here that one is set height and also width. So drag that over here, drop that right there and in this situation I want to shrink it by a certain percentage which means I'm going to divide the height by a certain number. That means I need to be able to perform a division. Guess what? Those are in the math blocks. Click on math and look for division. There's division. Grab that. Bring it over here. Drop it right there and there we go. So I want to take my button height which is this guy right here. That means I'm going to need to go over into the button again. Click on that and find button height. Remember we want our puzzle pieces to fit together and this one requires this guy. So drop that in there and I want to divide it by let's say 1.4. Again math. want to create a number here. Grab that. Bring it over here. Drop it in. Divide it by 1.4 and that is going to shrink it whenever the orientation changes to horizontal. Want to do the same thing with our width. So let's just grab this, duplicate it, drag that, drop that into place. And yes, you can have these blocks stack on top of each other, but it's not really a great thing. Change that to width, change this to width, and there we go. And then in a situation in which we are not in horizontal, we're in vertical, well, that's going to mean that I want to change back to the way things used to be. And I can also scroll here. So in that situation, I want to set my button height. Let's just duplicate this. There we go. I can pull this part off of here. And then, well, first I'm going to have to go in here and add an else, else. There we go. There we go. Drag this up here. Drop it in there. Going to do a duplicate again. Duplicate. This time I'm going to be affecting the width. And there is the width. Then I'm also going to be using a number. I'm going to convert it back to what it used to be. Height is 342. And then I'm going to change the width to back to where it used to be. Right there. And that's 285. And again, I'm doing this orientation change here just to be able to demonstrate some different math functions. And yes, there are easier ways to do orientation changes. And that is everything. That is how to create the entire application. And now that we have everything set up properly, all we need to do to get it onto our device, to, instead of using the normal connect and AI companion, which is the normal way, we can just click on connect AI companion. Let's get out of that. Click on connect AI companion right there, or we can use an emulator. But since we're using GPS, AI companion is going to work. In this situation, we're going to click on that. It's going to put this up here on our screen. We're going to be able to photograph this with our Android device and test it. If, however, we want to actually send it to our Android device so that we can test it on our own, in that situation, you're going to come to build. And this guy doesn't always work. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to say I want to save the APK, which is the fancy name for our Android application, to my computer. Whenever I click on that, little thing's going to pop up and it's going to build my application for me, as you can see right there. And there it is. All set up. And here it is. And I could go show in Finder. Here is my zombie application. Now what I want to do is I want to email it. You have to have a Gmail account. That's the easiest way to take this guy and automatically have it load and execute on your Android device. You're going to need to get this guy and you're going to need to email it to yourself. One of the ways I'm going to do that is go to services and new email with attachment, but you can do it whatever way you feel comfortable emailing an attachment and then I'm going to send it to my Gmail account. 
But the very first thing we're going to need to do is make it so that our device is able to execute and install unknown applications, which is in essence what this is. So let's take a look at how to do that. Okay, so to be able to run an outside application on your device, what you're going to have to do is inside of settings. Now this is going to be different on everybody's phone, but on mine it's going to be in settings. And then I'm going to have to come in here and look for, in my situation, it's security. But what we need to look for specifically is unknown sources right here where it says allow installation of apps from unknown sources. This must be checked. And if you have that checked, then you'll be able to receive the applications and install them. Okay, so now that you have that all set up and you have the capability to install customized applications, what we have to do now is go and check our email and install that application. So let's take a look at how we're going to do that. Now that we have sent our application using just regular old email, remember we have to use Gmail if we want to be able to open this up. We can now go into Gmail and we're going to see the application right there. And from this, we're going to be able to click on it and install it. It's going to say, do you want to install an update to an existing application or do you want to install this application in general? And then the user can just come down here and hit install. But make sure you must send it to a Gmail account. It can't use other pop versions of email. And if you do that, your application will be installed and ready to work with. All right, now everything's installed and everything's working and we reviewed a heck of a lot of things using App Inventor. Please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.